Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. There are a lot of companies going after autonomous driving, including Tesla, Ford, but the one company that I think has separated itself from both the technology standpoint and a business standpoint is actually General Motors. And it's not GM itself that I'm excited about. It's the company's 80% stake in autonomous driving company Cruise that really is going to be the value driver long term. This is a company that already operates commercial operations where you can go get in an autonomous vehicle with no driver in three cities in the U.S. That's something that's something you can't do in a Tesla today. A Tesla has to have a driver. So why am I excited about Cruise and General Motors? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. And I have more information on this stock and this analysis specifically if you're interested in a link in the show notes to Asymmetric Investing. That's my newsletter where I'm covering companies that have 10x potential and actually, I think GM is one of them. And the reason is Cruise. It's not really the core business. It's just Cruise. So let's dig into it. My name is Travis William. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my coverage on disruptive companies, including on, in autonomous driving. This is an area I'm going to be covering a lot here. And like I said, if you subscribe to Asymmetric Investing, you'll get all of my investment analysis there as well. So let's first start with what Cruise is, because I think that's, because that's really something to understand if you're interested in autonomous driving, in different business models, and then I'll get into what GM's role is with this company. This is Cruise's website. I think this is a good place to start. This is the vehicle here. It's a Chevy Bolt that is modified with all this equipment that's on the top. So this is the LIDARs, the radar, all kinds of different sensors to sense where the vehicle is, if there's people walking up to it or other vehicles around. It's a lot more than just a camera system like Tesla is. And so I think that's a really notable way to think about this company is there's a lot more redundancies involved. It's a very different structure in the way that they're building out this business. And the thing to understand from a technology standpoint is that Cruise is building level four autonomy. That means that these vehicles are going to be able to operate in a specific designed area, a geofence area, if you will. Whereas what Tesla is trying to do is develop level five autonomy. That's a vehicle that's going to be able to drive anywhere. The advantage of level four is it exists. It's here today. It's licensed by the state of California. They're licensed to operate in Arizona and also in Austin, Texas. So this is something that is here and is growing. The question is going to be how, how quickly are they able to grow those maps and grow the boundaries? Whereas Tesla's level five autonomy, which is based primarily on cameras in the cars, requires a driver right now, which means it's actually operating at level two. That's the big difference is when is it actually going to get to level five? We don't have any answer to that right now is the honest answer. And even Tesla's executives won't say when they're going to be allowed to operate that vehicle without a driver. That's going to be the big step. It's going from level two to level three is when the responsibility of driving, the responsibility of a crash goes from the driver, the person operating the vehicle to the vehicle itself. So with these autonomous vehicles from Cruise, it's actually Cruise that's driving. There's nobody sitting in the driver's seat. The current rides that you can get into with Cruise are a lot like getting into an Uber. You call it with an app that you can download in the app store. And then this is the operating area in the San Francisco area, in Phoenix, and then in Austin. You can see that this isn't the entire city, especially in Phoenix and Austin, where they just started operating late in 2022. But those are starting to expand over time. And in San Francisco, they've expanded their space just in the last couple of months here to be most of the San Francisco Peninsula. So that's slowly increasing the amount of space that Cruise covers in that city. There's also a delivery service. This is going to be one of those things that's going to start out very slowly. But when I get to their custom vehicle in just a second, that's where I think this is the kind of product that's really going to take off. And think about Uber's business and how reliant they have become on the delivery business. This could be a huge business for Cruise as it launches more vehicles around the country, actually uses utilization of the vehicles that are operating. So a lot of benefits from being part of the delivery infrastructure. And here's that Cruise origin that I alluded to earlier. I'll get into that a little bit more, but this is what a custom delivery vehicle would look like. They just put this module in here and you're able to pick up goods from a number of different places and deliver those and they would have access to those little modules when they get, when it gets to their home. So that's an interesting way for them to grow the business and increase utilization in these vehicles. And they already have partnerships with companies like Walmart in the Phoenix area. So this is not something that is theoretical. It's something that's happening right now. 
From a riding perspective, the Origin vehicle is going to be a lot like a little tiny bus, but built specifically for ride sharing. So if we look at what it looks like on the inside for rides, it seats about four people. You can control things like music and temperature. And unlike something like an Uber, you don't have somebody sitting in the front seat. It's also built for mobility. So this is another really great addition for something like Cruise is you're able to handle a wheelchair. Could increase mobility for a lot of people that have a hard time getting around right now. So that's another great advantage for this kind of technology. And this vehicle itself right here is actually being tested in California right now. The company is looking for national approval to launch it on streets. And this is being developed with the help of General Motors and Honda. But it's a specific vehicle designed for cruise. So this will be really the first custom vehicle for these autonomous ride sharing companies. And it's in testing right now, but we could see it from a commercial perspective on streets as early as by the end of this year. So that's a really exciting advancement. So this is the kind of technology and vehicle that's currently operating in a really small area. Like I said, three cities in the U.S. is all they're operating in right now. But it wasn't long ago that Uber was just getting off the ground. Uber only officially launched in 2011. But 10 years later, the company was operating in 10,000 cities around the world. So this is the kind of thing that can expand really quickly. And Uber has really shown the way. So if you think about Uber's financials and what the future of a company like Cruise could look like, over the past year, Uber has generated $32 billion in revenue. Like I said, that's in about 10,000 cities. And they have 5.4 million drivers doing 7.6 billion trips last year. Those are the kind of numbers that I think Cruise could do over time maybe in a decade, maybe in a little over a decade. But the growth of this kind of business can be really astounding. And the advantage that crews should have over Uber is that those vehicles are gonna be available 24 seven. So utilization of any specific vehicle is gonna be higher. And your cost should be lower because not only is the vehicle itself built for ride sharing, specifically built for this and they're built exactly the same. There's no customization for any specific vehicle like there is with a typical passenger vehicle. But also there's no driver. There's nobody to pay for that ride sharing surf. The driver actually gets a fair percentage of the amount of revenue from each ride. And then Uber takes a cut as well. So the average ride is about $25. If you just do some back of the envelope math, if crews can charge about $18 per ride, get to a thousand cities with a thousand vehicles per city and do 30 rides per day, that's almost a $200 billion business. This is the kind of product that I think could disrupt transportation in general. It could make it possible to not own a vehicle if you're living in or near the center of a lot of cities. It could make it possible to own one fewer vehicle if you're a family like we have in a suburb. It really makes transportation as a service a viable thing. I think Uber just still isn't quite there. It's not as available. It's not as cost effective as it needs to be something that I can rely on every single day to get to anywhere that I need to go. We're just not quite at that point with Uber. With something like Cruise, we could absolutely get there. It'd have to be more vehicles and it would have to grow extremely quickly. But here's where GM comes in. GM is doing the manufacturing and they're also providing financing to Cruise. So they've funded the company to get to this far, but they've also said they're gonna have a $5 billion line of credit to increase the commercial operations of Cruise. So when we start to see that service area expand, there's going to be enough vehicles to fill the demand that people have in the market. This is not a sure thing. I want to be clear with that, that this is the kind of business that could be enormous over time, but it might not reach that potential. The great thing with this kind of investment, though, is to get exposure to Cruise, you have to buy GM. And GM is actually a really cheap stock. Shares trade at less than six times earnings. Management ex is expecting to be extremely profitable this year. It's a cash flow positive company, it pays a small dividend. I don't see General Motors' core business going anywhere anytime soon. Of course, companies like Tesla are starting to take a little bit of market share, specifically in cars. But most of GM's business is trucks and SUVs. And that's not something where those kind of companies are taking significant share, at least quite yet. And GM's making a big move into electric vehicles. One of the vehicles is the Cruise Origin. So this is going to be a company that you're getting for a really good value. And you get the upside with Cruise that I think is a clear leader in autonomous driving right now. I think Cruise could be a business that's worth multiple hundreds of billions of dollars 10 or 20 years from now. Uber really showed the way. It showed that there is demand for transportation as a service and now for delivery as a service. 
Now we can take that to the next level and automate those services with a product like Cruise. This is the only company that's moving into the market with a clear business model and the right technology for the space. So I think that puts Cruise clearly ahead of a lot of companies like Tesla, like Waymo, which is owned by Alphabet. So that's why this is a company that I think has an asymmetric potential. If you wanna dig more into that, like I said, I will put a link in the show notes to the report that I wrote recently about Cruise and about General Motors and what kind of upside I see in those companies and those stocks. But if this one isn't on your radar in autonomous driving, I think it should be because they're further ahead in the competition than you might think. What do you think about GM and Cruise specifically in autonomous driving? I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below and subscribe to Rive Investing here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.